We are the Entrepreneurs Unity Group. Today, I'll be discussing the boundaries of hell as shown in the episode. We will summarize one and two. The first scene takes place at a cafe, where a concerned middle-aged man is checking the time on his phone. At 1.20 p.m., he starts feeling nervous and glances around. There is silence for a few seconds, and then everyone in the city is startled by a loud bang. And then, three supernatural beings that look like humans barge into the cafe. Their faces constantly belch out black smoke, and they have the appearance of monsters. They approach the same man from earlier and begin tossing him around like a rag doll as people start running away in terror. The man gets away and makes a break for the main road. The monsters, however, are too obstinate to let up so easy, and they chase after him. The monsters give chase for a long time before capturing the man and punishing him severely. Once he is no longer breathing, they will lay him on the road and perform a rite that will cause him to burn to death. Following the man's demise and the removal of his soul, the three entities vanish into thin air. Meanwhile, we are introduced to Young Jin Shu, the chairman of an infamous cult group titled the Backslash S New Truth. He constantly preaches his beliefs and has developed quite a fan following. In one of his rants, he says that evildoers are destined for damnation. He further explains that whenever a person sins, an angelic figure will approach and inform them of their impending death. The next setting is a police station, where a slack-jawed detective named Kyung Hoon is running late for a case briefing. He hears rumors that the entire police force is discussing the three monsters. The murder was committed in broad daylight, therefore numerous witnesses have documented it. After the meeting concludes, Kyung and his companion Un Po are tasked with looking into the supernatural being's appearance. The two investigators wasted no time getting to the scene of the incident and began searching for clues. They search for footsteps in particular, but find none. Furthermore, they have not discovered any DNA evidence. So, after running into roadblock after roadblock, Kyung has decided to reach out to an expert on the creatures for guidance. Young himself is the cult's leader. A little time later, the two investigators show up at a gathering where Young is showing photographs of victims of the otherworldly beasts. According to him, an angel appears before the person who is about to die and tells them the exact hour of their death. For them to survive, people must lead blameless lives free of all sin. When the meeting is over, Kyung looks around and sees his daughter Hee Jung, who he assumes is a believer of the cult. After this, the police attempt to question Young, but he refuses to answer any questions about anything other than his own life. He says he wanted to do something terrible when he was 20 years old. Thankfully, he had a sudden change of heart upon seeing the three otherworldly entities. The animals, in Jung's view, have come to earth to do right by humanity. Therefore, after initially encountering the animals, he established the new truth in an effort to raise public awareness. Kyung, though, laughs it off and insists that human-made laws are okay. When Kyung tries to argue with him, Young counters by bringing up the murder of Kyung's wife and the fact that her killer is still at large. Meanwhile, we see working mother Park Yungja come home to her son and daughter after a hard day. Her offspring greet her with a birthday cake, much to her delight. All of a sudden, an angelic apparition approaches and breaks the news that Park will pass away in five days, at 3 p.m. the son of Park, anticipating his mother's anger, instead gets a shot of the heavenly being. A well-known live streamer, however, is included. He says he is part of a different group called the Arrowhead. Surprisingly, everyone in this crew is in their teen years. They routinely assault those who disagree with them physically, and they have little regard for the rule of law. The ideology of the new truth, it is also discovered, is a major influence on the Arrowheads. But Jung says his organization has nothing to do with the Arrowhead. On the following day, Park, the woman from the previous day, tracks down Young and spills the beans. She also plays a video her son shot as proof. After careful consideration, Park makes her an offer she can't refuse. In exchange for 3 billion won, her death would be shown live on TV. Park accepts the arrangement after realizing that she will leave her sons orphaned in the event of her death. Later, Young presents Park with a 3 billion dollars check and visits Park's home. Several members of the media have probably heard about this experiment by now. After the paperwork is finalized, Young takes a look around the house and asks Park whether she did something wrong to end up in this predicament. But Park says nothing and keeps silent. For fear of being attacked by the religious extremists, she is then prepared for the live webcast under an assumed name. 
The focus then changes to the Arrowhead streamer, who is promoting the New Truth ideology. He also talks about the three otherworldly entities who have caused devastation in the city. Someone speaks anonymously about Park in the middle of the stream, revealing that she is the one who would die in five days. The disclosure of her address is just the icing on the cake. Unpio is later revealed to be the one who leaked Park's information to the Arrowhead. He's been an officer and a built Arrowhead devotee all these time. As night falls, Kyung heads back to the house to look for his missing daughter. When his search for her proves fruitless, he contacts Hee Jung to inquire as to her location. The latter tells her dad that she's at a friend's house, which is a lie. Everyone is shocked to learn that she has actually been hanging out at Young's place. Hee Jung begins telling Young the story of her mother's death when he assures her she can trust him. When she was little, her mother had her take a load of clothes to her dad. Because the small child was so easily sidetracked, her mother went without her. She was murdered by a band of villains on the way, unfortunately. Hee Jung says that she still can't forgive herself for what happened to her. After hearing this, Young gives her a big embrace and promises she will see justice done. Hee Jin, a lawyer, decides to help after finding that information about Park has been leaked online. As a result, she rescues Park's kids and moves them to Canada. Young, meantime, introduces Hee Jung to the murderer responsible for her mother's death. After that, he does something to make her do something bad as payback. Hee Jung does so, and she begins to physically assault him. She kills him in a rage and doesn't stop until she's satisfied with the job. After paying their respects, the two burn the bodies. Hee Jung, who has just murdered someone, begins to laugh and smile. Evidently, she is quite pleased with herself. The supernatural being's behavior is consistent with the condition of the body the police discover the next day. As a result, the general public starts to accept the claims made by the New Truth group as gospel. Outside Park's house, the Arrowheads and followers of the New Truth have gathered to hear her final confession. Some Arrowheads members also storm the police station, attacking officers and demanding the release of their comrades. The next scenario takes place on Park's day of inevitable death. It turns out that not only the internet, but also several major television networks, are carrying the event live. Several prominent people attend, all of whom enter incognito. It turns out that in order to get such a front row seat to the event, they had to pay quite a sum. Park is taken out on stage soon, but her nerves prevent her from saying a word. She doesn't do anything to prepare for her death. Time stands still as three o'clock approaches, but then there is a huge bang and the three otherworldly black creatures appear through the walls. They swoop in on Park without warning and toss her against the wall. Kyung, meanwhile, has been watching everything unfold and has decided to take matters into his own hands. He produces a weapon and fires at one of the monsters, killing it. Of course, as predicted, it has zero effect on them. When Kyung approaches the monster, the beast merely punches him away. The creatures eventually kill Park and burn her to death. They then leap off the building and vanish into the ether. All the onlookers shake with fear at the unusual happening and genuflect in reverence. They begin to think that maybe Young was right after all. Kyung wakes up the next day in the hospital with all of his wounds healed. When he emerges, he finds that everybody has fled the city for fear of committing a sin. When he gets to his workplace, he turns on the TV to see a news segment featuring an interview with Young. In the course of the conversation, Young clarifies that the event was merely a divine message, and that everyone should get back to living their lives normally. He says, until God summons me again, I intend to search for his footprints. Meanwhile, Ken reviews the security camera footage and sees his daughter exacting revenge on her mother's killer. While doing so, he examines Young's interview more closely and spots his daughter's hoodie. The news prompted Ken to abruptly leave work and look for his kid. On the other side, the Arrowhead streamer is talking about the funeral that took place the day before. He says that most people bent down in reverence after the aliens had slain their prey and departed. But Hei Jin, the lawyer, and her partner, who were also present, did not answer. With the secret now out in the open, mobs are out to eliminate the duo and the streamer is aiding them in doing so. When Hei Jin learns this, she and her sick mother promptly leave for the office. Sadly, when she arrives to the location, having left her mother in the parking lot, she finds that the office has been trashed by the members of the Arrowhead. After that, Hee Jin tries to reach out to a co-worker for assistance, only to learn that he is in an even more dire situation. 
Those thugs sound like they really beat him up. Hye Jin, fearing she may be the next victim, rushes to the parking lot, where she discovers her mother under attack from the arrowheads. Soon after they leave, Hye Jin takes her mother in an ambulance. Her death from lack of treatment comes as a great tragedy. Kyung enters Young's residence in the following scene looking for Young's missing daughter. When he leaves the building without finding anyone, he is immediately attacked by irate thugs. Lucky for Kyung, Young phones him just in time and tells everyone to stop beating him up. He then arranges for Kyung to meet him at a local university. However, a downcast Hye Jin crosses paths with a journalist named Pastor Kim, who claims to have interviewed Young 20 years ago. The second is reluctant to reveal his secrets, but eventually gave in. Then, Pastor Kim plays an audio tape that reveals an eye-opening reality. According to legend, when Young was a young boy, an angel appeared to him and told him that he would die exactly when he turned 20. It will be 10.30 at night. Hye Jin is intrigued by the news and requests a recording, but the pastor erases it. The abandoned school is where Kyung eventually finds Young waiting for him. Without further ado, the latter explains that 20 years ago, he was visited by an angel. It's odd, though, that he never once sinned. If the creatures don't go after sinners, then they must not care about them. Because it is a random process, even the most innocent people could be murdered. Young goes on to say that he started the new truth in order to preach his idea that sinners should be punished. In other words, he created a climate of dread, and as a result, individuals are more hesitant to take extreme action. During the course of their chat, Young warns Kyung to keep his prophecy hidden by saying that if he doesn't, his organization will release a video of his daughter, Hee Jung, murdering a man. Young finally tells Kyung to live it up before the supernatural beings show up to beat him to death. Also, he requests, see to my remains. A little after 10.30 o'clock at night, the strange black monsters begin to appear. Just as before, they sling him around like a rag doll before finally killing him. Then they burn him to death while reciting prayers as if nothing had occurred. Hye Jin is still with Pastor Kim, searching for information about the recent events. To no avail, she keeps pressing him for details. She finally gets fed up and tries to leave, but Kim stops her and tells her that Young wanted him to kill her so that she could become chairman instead of him. Hye Jin, hearing this, runs away in fear, but as soon as she reaches the outside, she encounters the arrowheads. They continue to beat her until she finally quits struggling. Kim comes home to discover his daughter waiting for him in the last scene. Now, he has an enormous obstacle, protecting his daughter's secret. The episode concludes with a shot of Hei Body Jin's laying among the rocks beneath the bridge.